guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Wimbledon. If we could get 400 likes on the video, that would be fantastic. Uh, you might notice that we're playing Man United today. That's because that is uh, the FA Cup third round, of course, drew us against Man United, because when do we ever get easy ties in the FA Cup? Uh, so we're going to be doing that today, uh, just because I thought that would be a more fun game to do, just like a little bit different to shake things up in the same. But yeah, enjoy some highlights of the games we played this month. And all I will really say about this month is that form is a fickle mischief. It re mischief? Mistress, it really is. And we need to talk about that in a second. But enjoy the highlights, and I'll join you guys for the Man United game it through for Bree oh and it, as is so typical of this season we do everything right and we can't score and then Liverpool scored the first shot on time well, um I put out a full strength team because I thought we could beat them and frankly I don't know how we didn't but there you go Alexis Sanchez three comes and goal uh, well, it's been coming, really. I just don't think we're going to be able to beat Arsenal at the moment. They are just so good, and we just don't seem to have the answer to them. Cresswell goes short for Everton. That's nice football, actually. Williams through for Fabio. Fabio's equalised. Wimbledon 1, Arsenal 1. Fabio's 10th goal of the year, and that is what he does. And we've actually got an equaliser here. We're looking great. Cresswell wops it up. Oh, dear. I'm bored of those goals now, to be honest. Like, the goalkeepers are right on top of it, and they just let them go straight through. Disappointing, really. We've been all right today. Well, there we go. It's 2-1 Arsenal. They probably do deserve it. I was just a little bit annoyed about the second goal, because we actually did manage to shut down Bellerin with a strange tank. Oh, Bentevenia scores the penalty for Villa. Very disappointing. Ball whips in and penalty given. But there you go. 1-0 Villa. We need to do better than this. Got that overlap from Mankio. This time he does find it. Mankio needs to get a good ball in and soon. Fabio's across and it's 1-1 here. We need to turn this game around and get some form back since for some reason the form's gone out the window again. Bentevinia, Richards. There's enough players there to stop this. Azada. Oh my god. Ah. <sighs> It feels like you lose one game and then you're suddenly not allowed to win anymore. It really does piss me off sometimes. Yeah, form is starting to get my tits on this game now. It just seems impossible to win the moment you lose. All in. Goes short for Everton. That's nice football. Duarte comes back out for Carno. Oh, he scored! We lead at the Etihad. Manchester City nil, Wimbledon won. Now, we've lost some games as of late, and I've been a bit disappointed, but we do lead here, which is amazing. Gets all the way across, and it's put into his own net by Tur Avest, and we're two goals to the good at the Etihad. Well, this would make up for some of that poor form, wouldn't it? My God. Cranvitter whips it across. Icardi's in, and that's a disappointing goal to concede. They're back in the game. We've marked up Widmer to stop him from doing that, and we still can't stop him, unfortunately. Icardi steps up, and it's saved by Langura. Cranvitter, oh, put it on the rebound. Langura saved the penalty. It should never have been a penalty. Literally, there was nobody near the guy. He was on his own and he fell over. I'm, oh, I'm not even kidding. Isco, our wife of Widmer. Ball across, Felipe Anderson, and that is 3-2 to City. I knew we wouldn't be able to hang on. That penalty was total crap, though, I have to say. But we've managed, oh, we're going to lose another one. There we go, 3-2. The penalty was a joke, but I did never think we could hang on. Langura, though, played an 8.5. He really was fantastic, the youngster, but just wasn't enough. Marte. Acres of space for Adam Kirk. Carno. Lots of space for Ramsalar. Will he shoot? He does. Fabio on the rebound, and it is 1 0 after six minutes. This time we have got to hang on. We need a good victory to get some form back before our next match. Cresswell steps up, scores. 2 0 up. Now do not throw it away like you did against City. We can do better against Fulham, sure. Ali will score. Yep. Insta highlight, insta goal back for Fulham. Really disappointing to concede there. Uh, damn it. <laughs> Fernandez, Benali, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I cannot believe we've not won that. I, I just cannot believe this crap anymore. Right, guys, we're back, and we're going to do ourselves a question of the day. And today's question is this. What is the biggest defeat you've ever had on FM? And I think for me, it has to have been when I was with St. Pauli. Uh, I think we lost to Dortmund or Bayern 9-0 or 8-2 or a lot. We had a few of those, uh, unfortunately. Big bad results that we were absolutely destroyed with uh unfortunately but that's just one of those things that happens what's your biggest defeat is if have you conceded double figures before if so how bad did you feel anyway let me know if you've got any ideas for a question today of course drop those in the comments with the hashtag qotd yes so basically i i don't even know where to start so let's just quickly i mean as you can see we're sixth in the league not exactly uh, a bad performance to this point we're still 10 points above uh stoke in 10th and 11 points above villa in 11th but what's bugged me is this Right after the last live com, I saved it. I went away and I had to do some work. Basically, I come back, restart the game. Obviously, because the game isn't on. Come back, 
And then we go play against Liverpool. And as you saw from the Liverpool stats, they had one shot on target and it went in. We had so many opportunities. And they weren't bad ones. They were good ones. They were clean through on goal. They were open goals at one point. Headers from close range. All kinds of things that you would expect us to put in. And all of a sudden, as if by magic, we suddenly couldn't score f to save our lives in that game. Then, go into the next game and you think, all right, fine, it's Arsenal. You'd expect to lose. And I actually put out a full-strength team against Liverpool expecting to win. And we should have won. Let's make no mistake about that. You saw the stats. We should have won. I know that stats don't mean everything. But the fact is, there's only so many other options you can look at other than stats because of course the game is based on stats it's not real life football there aren't intangible variables that you can look at in this sometimes you just have to look at the cold hard facts um arsenal again we were better for we were decent for a while but they did sort of override us in the end um, unfortunately ribera's injury did not help us two months dislocated shoulder bad times people bad times next up though against villa i appreciate that yes our goalkeeper in goal is no longer as good however that doesn't explain why we've suddenly stopped scoring goals does it like we seem to be unable to take our own chances all of a sudden and quite happy to concede at the other end so losing against villa was an absolute shit show uh, a draw would have been a bad result but the defeat was just so poor. Um, but there you go. Next up against Manchester City. Fair enough. I wouldn't have earmarked this for a win anyway. We took a 2-1, 2-0 lead and I knew we were going to lose it. I, I knew it. Um, Malangura had a great game. At one point, it was on a 9.1 before they conceded that last let ditch goal to Felipe Anderson, which wasn't his fault, but there you go. And against Fulham, you know things are going badly. When you're 2-0 up at home against Fulham, playing brilliantly, they have two shots on target and they score them both. It, it's really frustrating because it's a case of basically, well, generally for the most part, limiting, apart from against City and Arsenal, of course, limiting teams to very few shots and even less shots on that, that they can actually get on target. The problem is that even when we limit them to very few opportunities, they just take the chance when they do get it. And it's frustrating because in that same game, we have eight opportunities and we miss most of them. They'll have one and they'll take it. And it's frustrating to see because after a while, you have to think, well, what more can we do tactically other than not let them have a shot ever? And even then, we'd probably score our own goal. It's just weird how form seems to have this huge cloud of horribleness on you. And it's frustrating to watch because... And I hope it doesn't come across that way. I'm trying not to seem too frustrated, but it's just one of those things you almost have to laugh at because it does seem that if you win two games on the bounce, you're suddenly going to just win everything, as you would have seen from when we suddenly were able to beat Man United ho away from home twice. And then you lose one game that you shouldn't even lose and you play that well, and then all of a sudden you're on a shitty run. And I know that football works like that in real life sometimes, but it just seems so overpowered in FM this year. You could, you know, you lose a game, you'll lose 10 more. You win a game, you win 10 more. Seems a little bit fucked to me. That's just my opinion. But I've seen plenty of people talking about the same thing. It just seems that form is way too powerful this year. Um, anyway, so Duarte's injured as well, which is not fantastic, unfortunately. Um, player of the match, he's been superb this year. He really has. Last five games, it's been, well, I mean, Duarte's probably the one that's played the most in that period, to be honest. It's just been a poor month for us in general. And unfortunately as well, because it's Christmas, I haven't had time to play any friendlies or anything because there's too many fixtures all at once so we're going to do this tactic here um no way in hell is cleverly playing why does my assistant i, I understand steve but can't he's just a better player i don't understand why he keeps trying to put tom cleverly in um yeah okay that's fine marley do i really want marley in there uh i think i'll put adam kirk in I, i'm more pleased with his performances when he has played than i am with marley's uh, plus Marley is not fully fit at the moment he needs some reserve games to get his fitness up we're going to go with that so Kirk, Carno, Fabio, Everton Ramsalar, Farmer Gomez, Planich, Anderson Manquillo and Langura now this is the thing Mahalo Langura fair enough he's not there yet obviously he's not but the thing is if I brought in a goalkeeper that was as good as our first choice goalkeeper all I'd have the entire time is a complaint from my first uh, second choice goalkeeper about why he isn't playing and then he'd end up leaving anyway so it's a case of you need to bring you know generally I like to have a decent first choice keeper who's experienced and then a young understudy like Langura and yeah okay I wouldn't like him to be called into action for such a long period of time but we have no choice in the matter so yes it's easy to say well suddenly your goalkeeper's injured and that's why you started losing games but the thing is goalkeeper being injured does not explain the lack of goals we've been scoring but that's the key for me um you know against Villa we just couldn't seem to break them down against Fulham we scored twice but then they were able to score with their only two shots it's I'm going to shut up about it now but it's just frustrating to see basically we're actually going to put this on counter though because it is Man United after all I don't know. Against Fulham, when we went 2-0 up, I thought to myself, right, we can finally break the cycle of crappy form and actually pick up a win and just sort of get ourselves back on the back on the horse, basically. Um, because that's where we need to be, basically. We want to be in that top half, and I think we will still be in the top half comfortably. It's just those runs of form seem to be so overpowered this year, and it's really difficult to get ourselves out of. We just have to... I don't know. It's very frustrating because it's not like we've even got loads of injuries. We've got one injury, as far as I know, and that's our goalkeeper. And of course, that's important. But we can't just go, well, you know, we've got loads of players injury. Last year, yeah, okay, that was probably part of the reason that we did have so many injuries. But this year, we don't. 
and it just seems that suddenly the players just cannot score a goal all of a sudden. Um, obviously, that will always happen, but you know what I mean. Fabio through, Fabio saved by De Gea. And again, we've started well against a team like Man United. They've had a shot on target and it's not gone in, so that's always a bonus. Um, they'll still probably beat us here, though, which is annoying because we've beaten them twice this year away from home. And I just wonder if maybe this tactic against them is more suited to the way they play when they're at home. Um, because away from home, they might be expecting us to come onto them a bit more. But you never know. You see what we're capable of. It's the exact same way we've played against them in the two away games. So let's see if we can do it in the cup as well. And knock them out of both cups. That would be quite something. To beat them up Old Trafford in the league and knock them out of both cups. Fabio. Everton's got cut inside. I tell you what, actually. A lot of the highlights have been us so far. Fabio in. Can he pull it across for someone? He needs to really... Can he get it across? Please don't shoot, Fabs. He's going to shoot, isn't he? Pulls it back for Adam Kirk and Carno on the rebound. Wimbledon have the lead and that is a thoroughly deserved goal. This is the sort of performance we've been putting in in games recently. It really has been. So when I say clear-cut chances, they've been really good opportunities. That doesn't always show whether they're good or not, I must admit, because sometimes a good one from the goal line, as we know, counts as clear-cut. And I've actually seen a header from the edge of the area count as clear-cut before just because there wasn't a defender in the way. Um, Fabio actually looked for the ball back and I cannot believe Kirk missed that. De Gea with his yoga pants makes the save, but Carno on the rebound, he does that a lot. He scored a few of those goals just appearing there and putting tap-ins in. So we're 1-0 up against Man United. Eh, hey, if we win this game, brilliant. Because I'm hoping that it would give us a chance to rejuvenate our league form. But I just don't understand where this result would have come from. Given how bad we were lately. Maybe it's because we've got a lot of players with like big game mentality and stuff like that. I don't know. Look at this. How are we dominating Man United to that extent? Uh, I'm definitely going to go to, again, look down this right-hand side. I've actually stopped doing that for the last few matches as well. Because... Everton just hasn't been able to be on form. And I think a lot of the way we play is actually very much hanging on how well Everton plays. And if he was to ever get injured, we'd be in for a real shock. I mean, it's great that we'd have Tobias Agger there as well, who's not found his feet as much and played as much this year, just because... I don't know. I feel like Everton seems to be playing so well that I, de I rarely ever bring him off in games or want to bring him off because he's playing that well. And he's actually very good with his old fitness, as you can see. Oh, hello, Ramsala. Edge of the box for Everton. He's got... Not Duarte. Who is that? Fabio, can he turn and shoot? Go on, big fabs. Shoot! Oh, it's in! It's 2-0! Wimbledon have a second goal against Man United, and it's Fabio with his 13th of the year. He's gone back to his bald head again, although I think he's had that for the last couple of episodes, to be fair. It must just be the passage of time. I swear to God, it has to be. Because I tried this one day. I sat there, and I looked at what haircuts Fabio had, and then I restarted the game without saving it, and it was the same. So I shut the game off, and I reloaded it, and there was nothing. So it's interesting. I just feel like it must be the passage of time, plus, obviously, the having the flamboyant changeable or something stat in their regen thing. Everton four key passes is good today. United have had the top. They've actually hit the target a couple of times and not scored. So to be fair, Fabio has been superb playing a little deeper today. It's just as well we've got him in that role really. Although to be fair, we've also got the likes of Shane Williams who's been a bit of a knob lately um, because he's not playing but then he's complaining about it even when he shouldn't really be playing yet. He's not good enough yet. Um, that's an area I'd want to replace but unfortunately with the lack... Who would I normally bring in? Gomez. Yeah, that's a problem. Okay. Um, Ramstar's not had the best day and I'm actually tempted to get Masek on because we want someone that can win that ball in the midfield and Masek is the king of tackling well the bench is looking a bit more thin today guys I'm not a fan of that um, Planich is not looking he's looking low on fitness but what I'm actually going to do because Bernardo is insanely slow compared to a lot of them is I'm actually going to drop our defensive line back to normal um, and just sit a little deeper we're playing counter anyway but what I will also do as a result of that is mix the passing up a little bit because if we go short passing but drop too deep it means the players will try and work it out from the back way too much and we'll just get caught in possession i want them to be able to hit a long ball if they feel like it we're going to beat man united um that's great and we've really done this quite comfortably today to be honest united have offered nothing wimbledon two man united nil and we're through to the fourth round of the fa cup that's three victories against manchester united in one season they just don't seem to have the, they we just seem to have the better of them at the moment that, that's the simple fact fernando carno and fabio with the goals Oh, I don't know. I, I hope that that's going to then translate into some good league form. We need to win the game against Burnley, get ourselves two wins on the bounce, and hopefully that will set us away on another great little run. Honda is joining Reading in January, though, because he just doesn't play for us, uh, unfortunately. And I just wanted to sort of... He's on a lot of wages, and it just felt, felt like the right thing to do, basically. Uh, so let's quickly check out what we're going to be doing in the next episode. So... Uh, Southampton away? I feel like we've done a lot of away games in the live comms lately. Swansea away... Man United at home, maybe we should do Leicester at home. I know that's a long way. Well, it's actually not that far away, to be honest, is it? Um, actually, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six games in one episode. That is a lot, actually. Um, hmm. What would I What would you rather say? 
I think we'll do Southampton. There's very little difference in between them. I, I just have to be careful now because with it going as slowly as you've seen, sometimes it can take a little while to process stuff. So there we go. Um, we've won a game against Man United to end that horrible run of form with three straight league defeats. I just wish we could have done that in the league. Like, I would have been fine. I would have even accepted the Villa defeat, but it's the Fulham one at home. I guess it just feels like it all came up. And maybe it was just bad luck over those games. And obviously, I'm not saying there wasn't tactical things we could have done to improve things. Obviously, there was. I'm not perfect. Like I always say, if you want to watch someone win every game, I am not that person. I'm just a person that plays a game in theory like any of you do and just enjoys making videos about that type of thing. I'm more vlogging about my life in FM rather than acting like some kind of lecturer. I don't feel like I'm in a position to do that ever, um, really, because I wouldn't want you to feel like I'm trying to teach you anything because if you do learn something from my videos, fine, that's fantastic, but it's probably not come from me. It's come from someone else that I've just then um, emulated and I really hope that I can give credit to the right people with that. So Fo Prozone, Fox in the Box is all over that stuff. And if you haven't already checked out Foxy's channel, please do. Um, seriously, Foxy, make yourself known in the, in the comments or something And because, honestly, it's fantastic stuff. And a lot of the stuff I've learned about tactics and stuff, stuff is coming from reading Cleon's blog, um, on sisportscenter.com and strikerless.com from, um, I can't remember, is, uh, is it uh, Mary Guido? That's basically some of the blogs I read and you learn a lot from these things, seriously. It's worth checking out. And also FM Veteran, of course, whose corner tactic I've been using to massive effect, as you would have seen. So anyway, guys, join me in the next episode for a hard away game against Southampton. That's going to be a fun one, actually. I want to see some points on the board, though, because we've got Burnley and Newcastle at home, Stoke away and Liverpool at home. I want to see some wins from those matches. And let's try and get a smile back on my face again without Botox. So there we go. And uh, yeah, so I'll join you guys then. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.